What's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of abnormal and irregular breathing patterns that you need to be familiar with as a respiratory therapist. Are you ready? Let's go! First and foremost, there are three reasons why you must be familiar with the different breathing patterns that we are going to talk about in this video. The first reason is because you will be required to know this information for your exams in respiratory therapy school. Second, because you will see this information again when you take the board exams. So that's why you need to go ahead and learn it right now. And third, because you will need to recognize these breathing patterns once you start seeing patients on your own as a respiratory therapist. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive right in. First, we'll talk about eupnea. Eupnea is normal breathing and includes a normal respiratory rate of 12 to 20 breaths per minute. The pattern depth and rhythm are all normal as you can see as the waves go up and down at a normal rate. Next we have tachypnea. Tachypnea means that there is an increased respiratory rate greater than 20 breaths per minute. It is caused by hypoxia, fever, pain, or a central nervous system problem. Next we have bradypnea. Bradypnea means that there is a decreased respiratory rate less than 12 breaths per minute. It is caused by sleep, drug overdose, alcohol, and some metabolic disorders. And then we have apnea. This of course means that there is no breathing. It is a complete shutdown of the respiratory system. So basically with apnea, the patient is not breathing. This pattern is seen in death, head trauma, and strokes. Next on our list is hyperpnea. Hyperpnea means that there is an increased respiratory rate, rhythm, and depth of breathing. This pattern is usually caused by metabolic or central nervous system disorders. Next we have Shane Stokes breathing. This is an abnormal breathing pattern with periods of progressively deeper breaths alternating with periods of shallow breathing and apnea. You will often see this breathing pattern in brainstem injuries and when the patient has an increased intracranial pressure. And here's a little exam hint. For the TMC exam and clinical sims, when you get a problem with a patient showing the Shane Stokes breathing pattern, most of the time you can automatically assume that the patient has had a stroke. This little tidbit should come in handy when you take the exam. and. Our study guides are loaded with these helpful exam hints, and if you're interested, you can find links below down in the description. So moving right along, next we'll talk about Biot's breathing. Biot's breathing is characterized by irregular periods of apnea alternating with periods in which four or five breaths of identical depth are taken. So with this pattern, essentially, the patient is rapid gasping for air, followed by a period of apnea. This one is similar to Shane Stokes, except for each breath has the same depth. And it most often occurs in patients with increased intracranial pressure. The next breathing pattern that we need to talk about is Kussmaul's breathing. For Kussmaul's breathing, I want you to remember deep and fast. This pattern has an increased respiratory rate and depth with an irregular rhythm. This is a labored form of breathing that is usually associated with diabetic ketoacidosis. Next we'll talk about orthopnea. 
Orthopnea basically means that the patient will have difficulty breathing while lying down. Orthopnea is most commonly seen in patients with CHF, pulmonary edema, fluid overload, and chronic lung diseases. And again, another exam hint. So when you're taking the TMC exam, if you get a question about a patient that has orthopnea, I want you to automatically think that the patient has CHF or pulmonary edema. And last, but most certainly not least, you have apneustic breathing. Apneustic breathing is an abnormal pattern of breathing characterized by deep, gasping inspiration with a pause at full inspiration followed by a brief, partial expiration. This pattern indicates that there is damage to the pons and is associated with head trauma, severe brain hypoxia, or lack of blood flow to the brain. Now I want to share with you an example of a TMC practice question in regards to breathing patterns. So just in case, if you see something like this on the exam, you will know how to answer it correctly. So let's go ahead and break this one down. Here's the question. While assessing a female patient's breathing pattern, you see that her tidal volumes go from small to large to small and then stop for 10 seconds before starting again. Which of the following would best describe this breathing pattern? Is it A. Shane Stokes breathing B. Kusmal's breathing C. Obstructed expiration or D. Eupnea The correct answer is a. Shane Stokes breathing. Now, of course, you absolutely must know the breathing patterns for the TMC exam. That is because you will see at least one question about them on the exam. So for this one, when you have a patient that is breathing deep and shallow breaths with periods of apnea, this perfectly describes the Shane Stokes breathing pattern. And the most important thing that I want you to remember about this pattern is that it is seen in stroke and head trauma patients. So by looking through all the answer choices and using what we know about the different breathing patterns, we could easily determine that the correct answer has to be A. Shane Stokes breathing. Well, what did you think? If you enjoyed how we broke down this practice question, I just want to take a quick second to tell you about our Practice Questions Pro membership. How would you like to get new TMC practice questions like the ones in our videos sent to your inbox every single day? Well, the good news is now you can. Going through a new practice question every day may sound like a small thing, but over time, the knowledge that you'll gain will add up to huge results. So if you're interested in getting our premium practice questions delivered to your inbox on a daily basis, check out the link below at the top of the description. Alright guys, that wraps up our list of abnormal and irregular breathing patterns that you need to know as a medical professional or respiratory therapist. I hope that this list simplifies things for you and makes it easier to remember these breathing patterns. Because like I said earlier, you will see this information again in respiratory therapy school, on your board exams, and in real life once you start seeing patients on your own. So that is why it is important to invest time to learn this information now so that you can continue to use it throughout your career as a respiratory therapist. If you thought this video was helpful, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy my friend.